This is the second part of a discussion about dog spinal movement health. In this web series, we follow the progress of Squash, a corgi beagle mix who started Renuvite about a month before his 15th birthday. Renuvite was formulated to improve an adult dog's energy, mobility, cognition, and immunity. Renuvite is the only anti-aging supplement for dogs that contains both DHEA, an important repair protein for dogs and humans, and Univestin, a plant-based anti-inflammatory. In the last episode, we discussed how Renuvite has visibly improved Squash's mobility with better spinal movement. His circular butt movements are a combination of lateral moving side to side and sagittal up and down movements from his lumbar spine. This is the Squash Project. Let's talk about how important spinal health is for any dog. An international multi-center imaging study with 677,000 dogs found the overall prevalence of intervertebral disc degeneration was almost 28%. That's more than one out of every four dogs. The most common is intervertebral disc herniation. This can cause the dog to suffer from spinal pain, poor motor function, and partial to even full paralysis. The herniation happens when a portion of the disc between two spinal bones oozes out of its space and pushes against other structures like the spinal cord or adjacent nerves. Life can be quite miserable for these dogs. It's sobering to realize that squash or any dog has a 1 in 4 chance of having spinal disc problems. So maintaining or regaining good body movement is important for all aging dogs, but especially for squash. See, squash got his name because of his orange coloring. Also, his little runt of the litter was squashed in the back of his mother's uterus. As this video clip from National Geographic points out, it's important for the fetus pup to move his limbs or else they get frozen or very stiff. So since birth, Squash's left hip range of motion has been compromised. But despite this, Squash has always been destined for greatness, being the son of a show-class corgi mom and an irresistible beagle father. He clearly has improved spinal movement by the way he more easily swings his butt in a circular motion during trotting or dog jogging. He seems to be so joyful now. This got us thinking about his lumbar spine and how he has less back stiffness. Better spine health means better movement overall. Squash has a young friend, Belle, a six-month-old German Shepherd. She has a level of energy that Squash hasn't felt for over a decade. And watching Belle walk, run and jog and frolic, we see the true look of being limber. We spent a day with Belle five days after she was neutered. Despite being on calming medicine to allow her stitches to heal, she still had boundless energy, strength, and wonderment for life. Her joyful enthusiasm made it difficult to believe that she recently had surgery. We appreciate that her pet parents think responsibly about her reproductive health. It's important to remember that DHEA declines sooner in large breeds and neutered dogs compared to small breeds and intact dogs. So when she's an aging adult dog, Belle will start Renuvite in four years to maintain her energy, mobility, cognition, and immunity. But let's talk about Belle's current healthy spinal movement. She is limber. In this episode, we look at real-time and slow-motion video of her movement. We're not alone in thinking about how the spines of these two dogs move differently because of their breeds, body shape, ages, and individual challenges. Formal studies of non-invasive three-dimensional canine spinal movement are still evolving. Different breeds and different individual dogs have slightly different movement patterns even from step to step. This makes collecting data and creating a reference range for healthy joints rather challenging. As you watch the slow motion gates of Squash and Bill, you'll see how varied their movements are. This is a dog skeleton spine. For all dog breeds, the shoulder blades align with the pelvis. The one exception, German Shepherds, whose lower set pelvis allows them to take longer strides. 
Importantly, the area of the spine with greatest movement has the most risk for degenerative disease. That's lumbar 6 to 7, or L6-L7, back here near, near the pelvis and tail. Researchers use CT scans and MRI movies to capture how a dog's joints move while he's walking. In his 2017 Dogs in Motion Symposium, Dr. Martin Fisher explains this advanced technique to get such accurate data. He was a key participant in the two studies we've discussed that focus on spinal movement of L6 and L7 for beagles and German shepherds. I highly encourage you to watch his full 40-minute YouTube video. The link is provided in the description below. We didn't find any specific L6, L7 CT movies for corgis, but the work of Wax, Fisher, and Schilling from the Frederick Schiller University in Jena, Germany, used X-ray and CT scan videos to study the movement of the pelvis and lumbar spine in three sound beagles. They didn't have any orthopedic problems, unlike Squash, with his mildly stiff left hip. They found that although lumbar joint movement in walking or trotting beagles was small at less than 6 degrees, the greatest movement was at L6, L7, or L7 to sacral 1. L5 to L6 was 3 degrees, but lumbar joints from L1 to L5 moved less than 1.5 degrees. Of note, the pelvic roll was monophasic averaging a movement of 13 degrees while walking and 11 degrees while trotting. Pelvic yaw averaged 5 degrees while walking and 6 degrees while trotting. The pelvic pitch was biphasic and averaged 8 degrees of motion. And this was published in 2016. Now let's look at German Shepherds, a breed whose stance is unique as the pelvis sits much lower to the shoulder blades than any other dog. Dr. Martin Fisher brought his expertise from the first study to join Katharina Schaub at Justice Liebig University. The imaging used before was enhanced with more detail to study the pelvic and L6 to L7 movement in German Shepherds. Their extensive analysis was published in 2021. They used the three-dimensional imaging CT scan movements of the pelvis and the L6-L7 vertebral joints during walking and running. But this time they also used animation software that's used to create movement for cartoons and the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Movie animators use it to create imaginary creature movements, but this research team used it to describe real spinal movement in dogs. Among the four German Shepherds studied, there was a wide variation in the gait patterns between the dogs and their individual steps, but they got important findings. The pelvis rolled in an axial motion during walking, but shifted more to side to side during trotting. L6, L7 movements were not coordinated in time except on the side view. When walking, the movement between these bones was only 3 degrees and rotated or slid side to side, also called translated, by only 2 millimeters. Trotting caused much more side view movement of up to 5.1 degrees, but with trotting, L6 moved side to side 2.3 degrees. The pelvic motion also showed coupled relationships of L7 responding with more or less axial rotation and side-to-side -side movement. It's too general to ask the question, how does a dog's spine move? Instead, each joint of the spine has its own three-dimensional dance, and L7 has the most interesting choreography in how it partners with L6 and the pelvis. The scientists in both studies chose this tail end of the spine, the lumbar region, because that's where there's an increased risk for degenerative disease. In the abstract for the published studies of German Shepherds, the authors began with, quote, Lumbosacral vertebral motion is thought to be a factor in the development of degenerative lumbosacral stenosis in German Shepherd dogs, unquote. The key word in this statement is degenerative. In other words, these spinal diseases are a risk for older dogs. 
Puppies twist and turn and wiggle and sometimes try to spring into flight. They put their spines and sometimes their owners through great contortions. This is another valuable reason we must have anti-aging for dogs, to optimize their ability to repair so they have healthy spines and healthy movement. Part of this relies on providing the specific nutrients that contribute to maintaining the tensile strength of tendons, ligaments, muscles, and joints. Chief among these is hydrolyzed collagen. But remember that raw materials do very little unless directed by repair signals like DHEA. Oh, think of a major home remodel. Truckloads of materials may be delivered to the site, but does the job get done? No, you need a contractor, and that's DHEA.